Hi, and welcome back, everybody, to the second part of our Series 3 with Alex Roberts. Our last episode was featured on a Kickstarter update for Starcrossed, and so we wanted to say a quick thank you to Alex Roberts for putting that information out there. And if you found our podcast through that, welcome. This is part two. Yeah, we are really happy to have any new listeners here. Um, and we know that you're uh, started right in the middle of a very wonderful series that we recorded. And remember, if you do like the series and the stuff that you're hearing, please go ahead and give us a review uh, wherever you listen, because uh, those reviews will help our show climb in the rankings and uh, allow more people to enjoy the stuff that, uh, that we're putting out. Uh, plus, every single time we see a review... It, it makes us really happy. We get a good warm, fuzzy feeling in our hearts, and that's really what all of this is all about. Exactly. Also, during this time, uh, we like to cover our reviews, and we've got one review from Canada. This is our first Canadian review, and we are so thankful to Kyle Gould, who wrote a review titled RPG Goldmine. And he said, This is such a great podcast. Well edited, gracious, and knowledgeable hosts with a sparkling setup that left me eager to hear everything they have to offer. It's such a nice review, Kyle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kyle. And if you enjoyed the mixtape that we put out last week, good news, we have two more mixes that we are releasing with this series uh, to match the other sets of characters that we make, and we're really, really excited to share those with you as well. Yeah, we worked really hard on those, and they are turning out to be phenomenal. We can't wait for you to listen to those. And if you did miss out on the one from last week, uh, good news there as well. You can always find where to get the mixtapes in the show notes. Um, and they're also on the completed character sheets on our site. Just a quick reminder to everybody that Starcrossed is still up on Kickstarter. They have fully funded already, but they are rapidly working towards some stretch goals. So if what you hear on our episodes is of interest to you, we strongly suggest you consider backing this really, really great project from a really, really great designer. And with all of that out of the way, now for the show. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. Last time on Character Creation Cast, Alex Roberts, our guest in this series, began walking Ryan and myself through creating magical school students for her brand new game, Starcrossed, on Kickstarter now. We'll pick up right where we left off. Enjoy the show. Two things about me. Hmm. I got one for you. Hmm. This is like harder than I feel like it should be. No, not harder than it should be. It's just hard. <laughs> Uh, we could do it, uh, just kind of talking it through, mm -hmm. just toss out some ideas. So for example, he's listed a physical feature. So maybe you'd want to do something like, um, about his personality, got something one. about, yeah, I got to think about, Ooh, personality one. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. something like, um, uh, something about his sense of humor or maybe his complete lack of se sense of humor. <laughs> um, so can I ask a question about this and of like what you've seen in your playtesting? Mm -hmm. This is, um, it's sort of a weird situation where I am determining things about his character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it feels a little bit weird to, I don't want to say like, I don't feel weird about giving up the agency of that part of it. Like that doesn't mm -hmm. bother me, but it feels weird to take that over for somebody else. Yeah. To say so, like, here's things I'm telling you about yourself. It, yeah. it seems like that's uh, the perfect reason for an uh, X, a soft X card, I guess you could say, where it's not something offensive or anything, 
but something that you might not be comfortable playing, you could probably exit. So, uh, so when, remember that when we talk about the X card, it's not just a, an emergency button, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just a a, um, a hatch, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like an escape hatch. It's for anything. It's f- it, it it doesn't mean I hate this and it's the worst thing ever. Right. It means I am less than one hundred percent jazzed on this. So, knowing that your that your co player can just can just say no thanks i'm not into that my hope is that that will kind of open you up to tossing ideas out there Mm -hmm. right because i mean when you're playing a role-playing game it's always collaborative to some extent and when you offer ideas those ideas are gifts in the sense that they're beautiful and it's so cool that you gave them and also in the sense that the other person is not under any obligation to like use them you know they're not commands Mm -hmm. they're just offerings like maybe this would be cool and that's true of everything that we're going to put together right when we were designing our world you weren't like hey i'm deciding it's going to be wizard school you were like hey here's an offering of something that might be interesting here's a dynamic that i think might be cool Mm -hmm. and then the other player can say yeah i'm totally into that or they can say let's change let's do that but with a little change um you know like For example, I said, yeah, we can do Harry Potter. And you two were like, oh, yeah, but let's not do exactly Mm -hmm. Harry Potter, Mm -hmm. right? So that's a good example of taking things, incorporating them, saying yes, but, you know, or or, yes, and let's do this on top of that, or not exactly that, but something a little different. Mm -hmm. And that that never stops. Throughout the whole game, you're doing that kind of negotiation. Um, The other thing I want to say is that I think your concern about saying something about the other character comes from a really good place because I know that sometimes that happens at the table in a really bad way where you're kind of trying to be a certain way and other people are just steamrolling on top of you and being like, no, you should do this. That sucks butts. And (laughs) yeah, I mean, player agency is, I, I, for me personally, I'm, Mm. I'm, I don't always find it to be a big deal I, I like being able to say sure like the gm can you know like whatever try it out we'll see what mm-hmm. happens you know but i mean that takes a certain level of trust too yeah. um but i do know people that are really uncomfortable with that that are like i have this character that i want to play this is mm-hmm. you know the story that i've imagined for them and you know the kind of personality traits that i want them to embody yeah. I, I don't want you to do anything else with that because that's mm-hmm. like this is my thing that i've created yeah and uh I think it was Adam Koble who said that, um, you know, it can be really helpful to think of your character not as a set of, like, truths that are established, but rather as a set of questions that you would love to answer through playing them, right? Mm -hmm. You're playing to to find out the kind of person that they could be. Mm -hmm. Um, So think about that, too, that you're not saying this is the be-all and end-all of your character, and this will be the the end of them, but rather, here's a cool starting point. I'd love to see how they change, right? So if you said, uh, I think it's really cute that your character is a total grump, and it's really, really hard to crack them and get them to laugh, that could be the place where they start. And then if over the course of the game, they kind of like warm up to you, and you have these really sweet moments where they kind of like, you know, put down the facade a little, and they stop being so grumpy, and they they laugh with you, Like, they've changed it. They've taken what you've given them. They've incorporated it in a way that they really like. And then by the end of it, you have this really cool character. So, yeah. I mean, and I still, I still like, I really like the idea of Mm -hmm. swapping sheets, especially because it is a two-player game Mm -hmm. and you're playing a game about people that are attracted to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I like the idea of swapping it out and saying, like, okay, here's things that I want my character to be attracted to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is, a, I mean, a different way of thinking about it than saying, you know, here's things about your person, but rather, like, here's things that my person wants you to have. Mm-hmm. Yes. And in fact, the best way to think of it, let's go with this. Um, and I haven't articulated it this way before, but thank you for making me think of this, is here are things that my character perceives about you, right? Mm-hmm. So my character sees you in this way. Whether or mm-hmm. not your character thinks that about themselves or whether or not that is, like, objectively true my character sees you this way. And I think that, you know, that's been my experience with real people in the real world, right? That when you're close to someone, you end up saying like, oh, you know, I love this about you. And they're like, 
oh, really? You think that about me? I never thought of myself as like that before. Oh, gosh. You know, that that's actually like kind of a cool thing about being close with someone, um, whether they're a friend or a lover or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. People see you in vastly different ways than you see yourself. Yeah. And then you that I mean, we we learn about each other. Like we, we learn about ourselves through a relation with other people. That is totally one way, one kind of path of self-knowledge. So let's let's think of it that way. I would say write down two things that your character sees in the other character. Um, and then, you know, if, if you two end up playing this, these two characters down the line, which now I kind of hope that you really do. Um, <laughs> but if, if you ever did, it might, might be interesting to see if your perceptions are borne out as true or if they live up to those or if they kind of defy those perceptions over the course of the game. So, Ryan, do you have... I've got one. Two? Okay. I have two. Oh, you're way so, ahead. I was too engrossed in the conversation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so do you want me to go ahead and um, say what they are? Uh, sure. Well, why don't we wait until we want to wait until done? I mean, yeah. we can cut out the silence. Podcasting mm-hmm. is magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it in post. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, great. So are we ready to keep going? Yes. Ryan, why don't so. you uh, tell us the two things about our lead that they don't realize are attractive all right um i put uh that she has glasses and the way she looks over them at times when deep in explanation of something Ooh, ooh, i like it Mm -hmm. and the other one was um i can always tell when you're around because you always smell amazing and (laughs) i think it's from your hair because it, it's got that like silky quality to it. It's always oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> so like I, I can <laughs> always so tell good. when you enter the room because uh, that the first thing is get that that olfactory sense. Mm-hmm. That's that's lovely. funny because real life Amelia has a thing about like how shampoo smells. I'm very particular about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's the only way I know how to evaluate shampoo. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah, no, like, no concept of its other qualities. <laughs> Right, like I don't know, if, like my hair is just I don't know. It's gonna do what it wants. Like, yeah, exactly. I can't control that situation anyway. This so smells great. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. Okay, great. And so again, these are just lovely gifts, right? So when you're describing your character in a scene, you can totally be like, I mean, that smell one is great, right? Because you you can be describing a detail about the room before you've even walked into it. And uh, yeah, so Amelia, what did you come up with about the follow? Um, I said that while he's thinking, he always bites his lip. Oh, cute. Which is adorable. And then um, he always gets really, really excited when he learns something new and is like explaining it to people or telling other people about it. Mm-hmm. It's like really worked up and excited about it. That's that's very adorable. Really, so cute. We've made really cute people. Like, <laughs> like these people. are so excited. They're so sweet. <laughs> okay, rad. Um, so the next two questions are what has brought us together and what is keeping us apart? So we decided on these collaboratively, like what is happening in the world. Um, it's important to write them down on your sheet so that you can kind of keep them in mind and articulate them. Mm -hmm. So try articulating them from your character's perspective. Hmm. Hmm. So I know this is like really hard. (laughs) Really? Because like, because Amelia, the person is like, no, I ship them. (laughs) (laughs) This is this is a common trap. This happens. It can, it can happen to anyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want everyone to be together all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're cute. I mean, my God. <laughs> right? So if I ask your character, why can't you be away from that person? I mean, the quick answer is we're in the same house. Yep. And we right. are always put on, you know, the most difficult tasks that they give students. Um, because we're the ones that are able to figure it out together, even though it, it seems like we butt heads all the time. Yeah. yeah I think people keep putting us together. Yeah. Great. And so just quickly, oh, so, sorry. And, yeah. and we want to appease the, uh, the professors because, uh, the mm-hmm. favor of the professors, uh, is also a determination of who gets to head the house. God, that is mm. such a Harry Potter thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's an accurate to life British boarding school thing. <laughs> um, great. So honestly, just quickly summarize that in those two questions. Does not have to be long or complex. And those are only on the sheet for the follow, right? Uh, they should be on both. Okay. Oh, okay. I had to I tape mine in. 
Or is there just one question that says, why can't we be together? Uh, why can't I act on my feelings? Oh, okay, great. So you actually have a more recent version of the character sheet oh. than I thought you had. Um, okay. I have an older one in front of me, which I thought you had. So yeah, that question has actually been amalgamated into why can't I act on my feelings? Mm -hmm. So just answer that in your own words, <laughs> or in your character's own words, yes. I mean. And this is, this could be a, like a public, like the, the lead knows that I as a follow think this way, or it could be a, like a internal private reason, um, I'm assuming. So the, so the next question is, why is that important to me? Uh -huh. So all of this is transparent between the two players, but I would say there should be some level of uncertainty mm -hmm. or maybe just like not admitting it to yourself kind of uncertainty yeah. about knowing whether or not the other character feels the same way about you that you do about them. Okay. So whether you're like aware of their feelings, whether you're aware of your own feelings, mm -hmm. Um, you probably won't be, depending on the situation. Okay, because um, I was thinking, like, even though we're vying for the top spot, mm -hmm. I still see her as superior to me, yeah. inwardly, but outwardly, I'm going to continuously try to one-up her. Mm. Okay, so that's beautiful. So I would say under why can't I act on my feelings, you can put that external reason, mm -hmm. right? Of like, we're, we're in competition with each other. And I would put under why is that important to me? Like, what is my kind of personal connection to that? Um, you can write that, that second thing, because that's kind of a compelling sort of layer beneath mm -hmm. the obvious reason. Right. I, I really like that. Um, Amelia, do you have answers to, uh, to our last two questions? Yes. So... Um, for why can't I act on my feelings? I said, I don't want anything to get in the way of the work that I'm doing. Great. Perfect. And why is that so important to you? Um, because I worry that a relationship would not last all that long, even if something did happen. Yeah. Whereas my education is forever. It sounds like, this sounds like a very Amelia answer. <laughs> Am I picking up on something that feels kind of um, real? I don't want to say that, like, I play characters that are me, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we all do. Like, to a certain extent, we all do. Well, yeah, you play what you know. I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, to a degree, there's always... Even if you say, like, this is totally the opposite of me, you're saying, you know, you're still making a judgment based on... Exactly. Yeah, who you're still you saying are. something about yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you play a caring character, you're playing the caring aspect of yourself. When mm -hmm. you play a, a ruthless character, you're playing the ruthless aspect of yourself. Um, so that's what that actually last question is designed to do, is to create really um, solidify that bond between character and player, mm -hmm. right? There's always a, a piece of yourself in that last question, and it's very much designed to elicit that. <laughs> so when you answer that last question, you now have a character. That's so awesome. this is the point at which you would start playing because mm -hmm. you now know who you are and where you are. Oh, I wish we could play. That's cool. I mean, like, I, it's like five questions and we have made <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. fully fleshed out people. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I, I really like this process. It's simple to get into and easy to understand. And, and I really like that you can create an actual whole personality with just these few little concepts. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I feel like we have the, the, the seeds of really interesting, really sweet characters and a, a really interesting relationship. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing yourself to this process. Yeah, it was so much fun. Ugh. You want to do it again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to do it? I don't know if we want to run through it two more times or just one more. I mean, there's obviously less to explain if we run through it again. Yeah, I, I think if, if you're fine with this, Alex, if we just run through two more scenarios with the different pairings. Yeah, totally. Because I really would like to show off like how different things can be. Totally, totally. Why don't we start um, uh, with uh, that thing that Ryan and I were talking about. We'll do a Magical Girl one super quick. Oh, yes. Yeah, do it. Awesome. Um, I don't know, Ryan, if you want to like do you have another sheet set up uh -huh. if you want to link that in the chat and then um, I can watch you and Alex <laughs> fill it in <laughs> while you're answering your questions uh -huh. about each other? I have to get a shareable link. And I'll be, I'll be here for a flavor commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give it edit access. Here's a question while Ryan is doing this. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to play it with more than two people? 
So just because it, there's, you know, I, I thought this through, like, while we were doing this, I was like, okay, so clearly, like, you could be a man, you could be a woman, you could be non-binary, whatever. Like, that's clearly not laid out. It does seem like it's set up for two people, and some relationships are more than two yeah. people. I don't know if you've tried that or if that's just, like, not the kind of story you're trying to capture, but so people can um, if they want. <laughs> so there's two things that I would love to see. Um, one thing is, like... That, that sort of different sets of scenes, right, that I, we talked about earlier. But honestly, mm -hmm. the hack that I personally is like my white whale for this game is writing the three-player rules <laughs> because it's got to be possible. It has to be. Um, it would just be much, much harder, right? You, you might need <laughs> yeah. less scenes, maybe? Well, I mean, also just in, in the dynamic and oh, how yeah. it would be set up and how the oh, characters that's true, are. Oh, that's true, yeah. Right? Like, how do you... Is there... Anyway, so... I, I I think that that's but now thinking about it, I'm mm -hmm. like, well, in those kinds of relationships, it's not like you all just like met as three random people. Like I think mm -hmm. a lot of times it is like these people met first and like they're already friends or they're already paired off mm -hmm. and then we add another person. It's not usually like three random strangers meet and then Yeah, and the sort of cancel yeah, have... run situation. Although I love right. that that <laughs> I would love to be in the room when something like that happens, like of like, hey, all three of us get along really great. Like, let's and, see and what it, happens. And it actually does happen, which is really rad. Um, so like, that's a lot of chemistry to get right all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it would be so cool and so interesting. And I, I think like maybe, um, maybe you could have instead of lead and follow, you would have like couple and third. Um, or maybe you would have to have uh, like three separate playbooks, get rid of lead and follow and introduce a different dynamic. Um, like there's so many different ways that you could do it. And I, like, that's what I really, really want to see happen. And I truly have thought it through and then been like, I cannot do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I need to focus on just making this game. Mm -hmm. And just try to think about the fact that like, even in a relationship that involves lots and lots and lots of people, I think that's always built up of um, of sets of people, right? Like a like relationship. Smaller yeah, exactly. Like the, yeah. The, my relationship with you and my relationship with you, your relationship with them. Um, you know, like a, a triad relationship is also three relationships. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I try to remember that and also think about like other ways that um, that poly experiences could be incorporated, right? So um, maybe w when we get into that, like, why can't I act on my feelings? Maybe one of the reasons could be like, my partner and I are not open right now. We have been in the past and maybe we will be in the future, but we're for various reasons, our relationship is not there right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this poly stuff is incorporated, but it's different. And this might take up a bit of time, but can I tell you kind of a cool story that's from early yes. playtesting? Yes, please do. <laughs> I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> she got me going. So I'm sorry. I was just, I was thinking about, I was like, I want to know. Because I just, I think that like, it, it's one of those, I think probably like you've spent a lot of time looking at the rules too, that like you almost need somebody who's like a little bit removed from them to be able to say yeah. like, oh, here's the one thing that you can kind of tweak to. Oh yeah. I think, I think when someone figures out how to, how to really do that, that three person hack up, right. Um, it's going to be something brilliant that will seem obvious. And I'll be like, oh my God, of course you're amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I will shake that person's hand. <laughs> One of the first playtests that I did, one of the players decided, okay, the reason we can't be together is because I have a partner back home. Now, in real life, this person was Polly, and like it was, it's a really big part of their identity, and it's super important to them, um, you know, personally and politically and everything. Um, so they were thinking, like, okay, so when we got to that, why is that important to me? Question. That was when they started to struggle with it. And they were like, well, why would that be so important to me? And we'd already kind of established that their character was Polly, but had decided to be monogamous in this particular relationship. And their partner was new to that way of, of doing relationships. So they really, really had to think about it and be like, why would it be important to me? Like, how do I connect with that reason? And then they were just like, well, because I gave them my word, because I promised them I wouldn't. And whatever reason it's I did that. It's important to me because it's important to them. Well, well, it's it, they're like, I said I would do this and I will do it. Like my integrity is more important than 
anything about what I, you, you know, like that, that is the, at the top yeah. of my uh, set of beliefs about mm-hmm. relationships mm-hmm. is that you should be honest and do what you say you're going to do. Um, and this was mm-hmm. a situation where the two characters were like on this Mars outpost that there were no other people there. It was all automated and their partners were back, uh, oh, man. like their partner was back on the, on earth and they couldn't communicate oh, wow. with them. So it was just like, I, I left saying I would not do this. And regardless of what I think could be or should be or whatever, I gave my word. So it was just this really cool moment of seeing that shift um, when they really thought about it. Uh, so yeah. So anyway, thank you for asking that because that's something I, I really have been thinking of. And if someone listening is like, oh, I, I can think of a way to do that. Get at me. Get all the way at me, please. <laughs> Yeah, because I want to try that game out too. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's let's do this magical girls thing. I am in the dock. Nice. I'm excited for this. Yes. Okay, cool. So, uh, Ryan, you were just the follow. Do you want to be the lead? I can be, yes. Okay, great. So you're the lead. Yes. I will be follow. So I'm just going to flip because I'm then I will ask the the questions here just to. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it up. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so what brought your characters together? Hmm. So do we want to be on the same magical team or do we want one of us to be a villain or? I was thinking like a uh, magical girl duel. Cool. Like we're, we're the only two that were, you know, basically chosen by destiny, I guess yes. you could say. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. that, that's basically how we got brought together oh cool so like i i like the idea that we weren't even it's not like we were best friends who got transformed right or like found our destiny but rather we were two people who didn't even know each other yeah and then our our magical animal companion mm-hmm. brings us together yes and yeah or, yeah, or we our, our we each had our own magical animal companion and mm-hmm. uh it or both of them brought us and to each other they're friends with each yeah. other <laughs> they conspired <laughs> So like you two are you two are destined to save the world from this threat, and you're gonna have to do it because that's that's what you were born for. Cool. Um, okay, so I love that. So I think what has brought us together is yeah our our shared destiny to be the to, to be the magical girl team. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, that's so cool. I love it. So what's keeping you apart then? I have an idea for this one. <laughs> okay. Go for it. <laughs> like I said, I've thought about this a little bit. <laughs> okay. I spend a lot of time thinking about magical girls, just kind of in my in my spare time yes. in my life. Yeah. Like we like you do. <laughs> okay, so um I am thinking that uh the follow in this scenario um mm-hmm. is actually the quote unquote leader of the team. Mm-hmm. And you are destined to be betrothed to this prince that's out there that you have to uh unite the kingdom together Uh in order to spread love through the world in order to fight the darkness right Right. okay so we have a miracle romance situation on our hands the miracle romance like siren is like firing in the background like (laughs) is that part of your shared destiny yeah. I think I think the shared destiny is I'm supposed to protect her. <gasps> oh. And get oh, her That's why you're together all And the time. get her to the prince uh eventually whenever we can find him. Mhm. Oh in God, order to so you know start this new utopia in the world after we defeat the eternal darkness that's coming to consume it. Right, right, right. Okay, so we have like a maybe there's like a tuxedo mask style figure yes. who kind of like appears and then it's super obvious to the audience that he's definitely going to be the prince. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but we, as characters, don't realize it, even though they have the same hair. Right. Uh, you know, God, Sailor Moon. So. <laughs> I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a tuxedo mask style character. There's a miracle romance. I am destined to be a part of this um, very important relationship. Uh, but unfortunately, you and I um really feel very strongly about each other in maybe in ways that we don't want to admit you mm-hmm. know, to ourselves or maybe we don't even understand y- yeah uh, or we you know we don't have words for um you know it's i'm getting like kind of a xena and gabrielle thing oh actually. yeah yeah, yeah. 
Definitely. Which is very, very good. Okay, beautiful. Um, okay, so under who am I? Oh, sorry. Can we start answering the questions? Because I feel like we have Yeah, no, go for it. So yeah, who, who are you? Um, can I just write Sailor Xena? Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I am a Sailor Gabrielle. That's so rad. I love it. That makes me super happy. Amelia, guide us through the rest. All right. So then what do you guys think is your most attractive feature? What do you like about yourself? Self, yourself. I have the most amazing set of pipes. Like my my sailor <gasps> suit um is like sleeveless. Um and like I just have I just have like those incredible like Michelle Obama arms, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> oh, I love it. Those Wonder Woman arms. All right. And um I'm going to say my singing voice. Oh, wow. Ooh. So, like, on downtimes, uh, I'll generally sing. Like, if we're out in the boat, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. uh, in between trying to fight the darkness, mm -hmm. uh, I will sing at camp or whatever. Oh, okay. And then this is, this is the part that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> After doing it once, I'm very, I'm all about this. <laughs> um, so, you just swap. What are two things about me I don't realize are attractive? Okay, cool. Okay, I have mine. Almost there. Take your time. Okay, I got him. Okay, swap. Okay, so who do we want to start with? Who wants to go first? Um, can I go? Yeah, please. Do it. <laughs> uh, so apparently the two things about me that I don't realize are attractive are my compassion for going out of my way to protect, to protect innocence in our battle against the darkness. Aww. And the second one is the way that your hair moves in battle. And I think it's fair to assume that I have this beautiful raven black hair that it goes to like about my waist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it also probably smells amazing and you probably use the same shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Rad. Awesome. All right. And for me, uh, my naivete, uh, I assume the best in everyone. And my unwavering devotion to making the world a better place. Nice. Oh, Yay. You guys, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why can't you act on your feelings? Let's see. We can't get in the way of uh, Sailor Xena's destiny. Yeah. My, my destiny is to uh, unite the world in peace. And I really believe that the way to do that is through the miracle romance. And in terms of why is that so important to me? Hmm. Is it possibly because of like the greater implications of that? That like, yeah, I think it's you about, view the world as more important than your own. Yeah, I think, I think you're getting at it. It's really hard for me because like, wow, I really just want these two to love mm -hmm. each other and not care about, especially oh. if there's some I man said, involved. I just want like, to ship step this. Aside. Why? What if... <laughs> We had a third companion at one point, and we lost them because we forced against our destiny. <gasps> Whoa! So good. Whoa! Wow. That adds up. Ryan, a you are so good at this. Darkness. <laughs> um, that's super yeah. dark. I'll allow it. Um, <laughs> so, oh, I've got it! I've got it! I've got yes. it! Now I can totally answer okay. this question. Um, okay. I. So I. Th uh, so Sailor Zena, I truly believe that if I give in to my feelings. I am actually endangering Sailor Gabrielle. Oh. Like, you know, like the oh. really bad stuff is going to happen in the world and possibly like to her directly immediately. Um, like this is for your own good. Yeah, exactly. So like just because oh. I love you doesn't mean that I should act on my feelings. Like that would just be so selfish of me to get what I want when it could put you in danger, mm -hmm. especially because I don't, I'm sure that she doesn't feel the way about me that I feel about her. Right. <laughs> oh, guys, oh. guys, this hurts my heart. Oh, the, the tragedy. Oh, this oh. is great. <laughs> I love those moments of like, oh man, this is so sad. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. See, now that we know the system, that's it. Mm -hmm. We're good. We could, we could play right mm -hmm. now, you and I, Ryan. Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, I love this scenario oh. so much. It's so good. <laughs> like sitting here crossing all my right. fingers all day. I hope she's into magical girls in some way, shape, or form. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's perfect. You might as well have hoped that my name was Alex Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, do we have time for one more? Do Amelia and I, I get think to so? Make a I mean, I think yes, that only please. took like ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, so. super, super, super. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, I've oh, I've already forgotten if you were the lead of the follow before. So I was the lead last time. Okay. Do you do you want to be the lead again, or do you want to switch? Um, I would like to try being the follow. Great. So I I'll mean, be the lead. It's not super totally different in the creation part, but you know, yeah, it's fine. When we when we think about our dynamic, we can keep that in mind. Right. So let's see, what do we want to do? What are some reasons? I mean, setting aside genre, right? I mean, what are mm -hmm. just some reasons why two people might be together, but not together together? Mm. Uh, one of my favorite playtests was two cool, radical, politically active nuns in the 70s. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's Hell so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's one very good piece. Um, <laughs> hmm. There is one very special playtest that I love very much. Um, a friend of mine played this and, with his wife, and they played out this romance that was like um, Ernie, who's a bus driver, and this lady at his church, and she had a big crush on him, but the two of them were married, and it was really important. You know, they also loved, like, they really loved their spouses and really wanted to, you know, just be a part of that and not screw that up and the fact that they had these little crushes they didn't want it to get in the way of their perfectly happy and healthy marriages but huh they would see each other at church and they you know <laughs> she would ride the bus every day and he would be there and they just had these really really sweet moments and like what genre is that i don't know it's sweet awesome romance that's all <laughs> yeah it's like romance novel like i don't know like beach read <laughs> <laughs> yes yes exactly wholesome beach read for christian moms yes that's a, that's a good genre <laughs> i'm trying to think like what is something uh, that's but like... we could also just like go to space and be aliens so it's totally cool yeah to like think. i want something that's like different from the other two that we've done because mm -hmm. like my instinct is always to just like be competitive and <laughs> <laughs> just like why can't we be together because we hate each other no i'm just kidding <laughs> Well, I mean, um, the old Pride and Prejudice, like, you know, that's a classic for mm -hmm. a reason. It is a good one. Um, we could be rival spies, like a CIA and KGB agent during the Cold War. Mm. I like spies. It's like, that's like a I sexy I like spies, one. too. <laughs> yeah. Let's be sexy spies. Okay, let's be sexy spies. Um, okay. Do you want to be CIA or KGB? Oh, I'll be, I'll be KGB. Okay, cool. I'll be CIA. I'm Canadian, so technically it would be CSIS, but, like, there's nothing sexy about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That was MI6, too. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's do MI6. I say, but, like, the, uh, right. Yeah, I was like, then they're not rivals, but, like, technically, I mean, really, in intelligence, you kind of are. It's mm -hmm. all very like, complex, really. You, know, you want to be, like, geopolitical yeah. nonsense. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll be MI6. Okay. And can we say okay. it's, like... um. Can we say it's like during the Cold War, like not now times, mm -hmm. but it could be like, yes, yeah, cool. Um, so I'm just gonna put MI6 under mine, and if we come up with like agent names during play, we can do that. All right, I will put CIA. Or oh, sorry, I thought you were gonna be KGB. Oh, that's right. Oh, if because I'm just gonna say if you're not claiming KGB, I'll claim it. That's fine. I mean, would you rather be KGB? No, no, no. It's all yours. Okay. You said it first. All right. <laughs> it's fine it was like a 50 50 chance <laughs> all right so i will be kgb okay perfect um, and then we have to decide our most attractive feature i'm gonna say that my most attractive feature is that i'm cool under pressure like a cucumber <laughs> i'm going to say that my most attractive feature is my wry smile nice this sort of little crooked smile it's mostly a little off to the right. <laughs> yeah, I would say that this next question is my favorite part. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. Uh, it's just so interesting not knowing what they're going to put about you and then getting, like you said, that gift back. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's, you know, I like to talk about like, oh, it's such a transparent design. But like this little surprise, this little tiny surprise, it is awfully fun, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> and it just like can inform so much that, you know. Well, I mean, or not very much if you end up not wanting it to, but um, <laughs> it can, you know, it's, it just sort of like changes how you look at this person. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Okay, I have mine. But take your time. Take your time. I'm trying to think of the word that I want here. Okay. Got 
my two. Okay, let's swap. You read first. Okay. <laughs> Do you, you want me to read mine first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So mine says, you seem to know everything about everything. It's intimidating in a totally hot way. <laughs> <laughs> and your sultry voice. I bet you could go undercover as a jazz singer. <laughs> Ooh, those are really good. I love, I love it this. so much. This is so good. Um, two things about me that I don't realize are attractive. Uh, they're making me blush because they're so cute. Um, so no matter where I'm assigned, I always make sure to bring some tea with me. <laughs> <laughs> um. That is something my character would never think attractive about themselves. I bet they're kind of embarrassed about it, and it's great. I just imagine it being like two o'clock, and you're like in the middle of doing something, and it's like, hold on, we have to One take a second. Break. Do you think that water is hot, or <laughs> you know what? Like, like you're in the middle of the desert. Like, we'll work with it. <laughs> we don't have time. Um, this bomb is going to explode. We don't have time for your break. <laughs> and my dry sense of humor. I love that. These are, these are very, very good gifts that you've given me. I can totally see incorporating these during play. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Why can't I act on my feelings? I mean, I feel like the easy answer is, like, it, it's the Cold War. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I don't want to be tried for treason. Yeah, ideally that would not happen. Um, I, I phrased it on my sheet as, I am loyal to the mission and to queen and country. <laughs> uh so yeah that's certainly that's the obvious external reason um but why is that important to you hmm. it's always good to spend some time thinking about this one this one i find can take the longest uh and it can be very rewarding when people have really thought it through yeah i mean because i feel like it, at at first glance it feels like the answers to those questions should be the same that like <laughs> why can't i act on that well because you know and it's important to me for the same reason that, like, I don't want to be found guilty of treason or, in your case, like, I am loyal to my country and that's important. Mm. But I don't know. I feel like really, like, what your background motivations are is, like, really telling about who you are as a person. Yeah. And I, I think on under almost every conviction, there's something deeper. You know, like, mm -hmm. that there's some kind of need. Like, now I'm thinking your character, like, they do a really dangerous job. You know, they could they could die any time. Yeah. Um, but there's some reason, like maybe there's something about, there's something about that kind of betrayal or there's someone at home, like that they, they don't want to bring shame to, or, um, that, that there's something about. I, I think that like, in my case, the Soviet Union is not necessarily known for their, um, strong judicial process. <laughs> so like, if for some reason we were caught it would be horrible for you like they would not be kind about that like you like oh you know i might be kicked out of the kgb but like you are gonna end up in siberia yeah oh can we say that like you like you know people who have been disappeared or have been like tortured or whatever and mm -hmm. so you really have like this really strong sense of like the things that could happen to me that you don't want to happen Yes. Ooh, that's really good. That really gives you a lot of depth. I like it. And you, you're very, very much like this kind of confident, like, cool, sexy spy. But I love that this gives you like this little, um, this really like caring kind of sweet compassion like just like underneath. This, and like that little bit of fear, like that little bit of yeah, it, a, f a flaw. It gives you some uncertainty, right? In a very, very mm -hmm. like confident character. I love that. That's great. Um, why is it so important to me? Hmm. I think, hmm. I mean, do you just honestly believe that, like, you're on the right side of things? Yeah, maybe there's, like, so I think my, my surface thing is, like, loyalty, right? I'm mm -hmm. loyal to Her Majesty. On her, on, I'm on Her Majesty's service, right? But there's, uh, maybe under that is, like, maybe, like, my identity as a spy is, like, all I have. You know, like, if if you live this kind of life, you can't really have, like, a family and, like, you know, normal yeah, hobbies. Yeah, you don't have those, yeah, those <laughs> things to, like, tie you back to anything else. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, maybe I could have this, you know, really cool, like, awesome, dangerous hookup with you. But I think it would, like, remind me, like, maybe there's this loneliness to my character. Um, 
Mm -hmm. and and you would risk everything that you do have yeah exactly my i so yeah i think my identity my whole identity is in being a competent loyal spy and that's where i get all of my like external validation and i wouldn't want to compromise that like if anyone in the service knew that i had a relationship like that it would really compromise my career and it's i've given everything to the service yeah yeah that'd be too big of a loss for you yeah exactly Oh, that's so sad. Wow. Cool. An undercurrent of tragedy. <laughs> that's, hey, man, it's, I mean, like, it, the question is, why can't they? Like, it's, of course, it's going to be, yeah. like, a little unsatisfying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm really happy. You guys really, really, really Excellent. brought it. Both of you. Yay. <laughs> yes. Good. Yeah, I mean, and I, like, I keep saying every time we've recorded an episode of this of, like, oh my god why did we make a show only about the character like and now we can't play them <laughs> like why would we do this well i it's love like that pure we, torture to be uh, <laughs> like oh now i have all these cool character concepts and then like they're just left hanging and we don't know how their story ends <laughs> i think you're gonna have to get really into like mm, f- fan fiction uh, yeah probably yeah i'm gonna have to like that. write some fan fiction we're gonna have to do some like bonus episodes <laughs> like it's gonna be we have some work to do that's awesome oh my all right, let me go back to my my episode outline mm-hmm. here. Um, cause I think I cut out the because normally we talk about like how did these people end up in a party together and like <laughs> that really doesn't apply to this I game. I think yep. that's quite clear. Yeah, like I cut that out. So <laughs> like I think that from this point we just wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. we can just wrap it up. It feels like we're just leaving all of this tension just hanging there. Like. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Alex, uh, for part one of our star-crossed character creation episode. Uh, do you want to remind the listeners who you are and let them know where they can find you and this amazing game? I am Alex Roberts, and you can find pretty much everything I do at helloalexroberts.com. Uh, that's where I just kind of post stuff that I am up to. Uh, if you're a Twitter person, I'm on Twitter a lot. You can find me at Muscular Pikachu. Um, so totally tweet at me there, and we can chat. Um, if you would like to find the game, by the time this episode airs, it will be on Kickstarter. So just go to Kickstarter and search for Starcrossed, uh, and take a look, see this beautiful video we put together, look at some beautiful art by comics artist Jess Fink, and maybe oh. cons- right? Thank you. Yes. Ooh, yes. I know, right? Ooh. <laughs> um, and consider yes, backing the project. Like- um, you can get the the PDF at a pretty low level, or you can back at a higher level and get the full, big, beautiful game. And uh, yeah, if you, if you, I would I would consider it, um, it very kind and sweet. Oh my gosh, I get so blushy when I think about people <laughs> supporting me in that way. <laughs> I just I'm so excited that Jess Fink is doing that. Like this, that's like the perfect art right? style for this game. Me right? too. Like oh my gosh. Oh okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm yeah. really so, excited. I, you guys can't yeah. see me like squealing for joy. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be definitely worthwhile to check it out. And we will have the link for that in our show notes to make it a lot easier for you. And I'm sure we'll be tweeting about it oh, endlessly, too. Most definitely, yes. I'm so excited <laughs> about this. Because <laughs> I've been watching, like, not to, like, creep or anything, but I've been watching the process as you've been talking Aww. about it on Twitter and everything. Um, and, like, sort of watching your moments of, like, hey, I figured this thing out. And it's so cool <laughs> to see it, like, finally done and, like, to see what it looks like. And I can't wait to see it once you have it on Kickstarter to, mm-hmm. like, what the art looks like and oh. all that kind of stuff, too. Thank you. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. So please join us next time when we dive into our discussion episode. Character Creation Cast is an independent production and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter, at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter, at Ginger Reckoning. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter, at Lord Neptune. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. 
Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the game systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.